Every time I'm doing something that is not essential, I'm giving up on something that is essential. Greg McOwen. And Greg again helps us see what happens when you don't focus on what is real and what you know. You get dragged away down rabbit holes and you miss the signal. You just listen to the noise and what we focus on here day after day after day as we track these markets each and every day for you on the 4T ETFs we follow is to chart that signal. And that signal is price movement. And we see price movement most accurately in the charts. And we see price movement most accurately inside our charts with our price percent oscillator. And again, that is why we use it as our main indicator. So always focus on that. If you are out there following, listening to CNBC, uh, CNBC, cutting it on in the morning, listening to Bloomberg, pouring through the Wall Street Journal and Barron's and all these other publications, that's great to entertain yourself. But never forget, never forget that the only thing that really matters is how accurate you are at following price movement. And remember, always look at also, what are people's reasons for doing things? Why is there all of this programming between commercials? It's to keep you focused, to keep you watching the programs, and to make damn sure you watch the commercials. What really counts is what's going on in the market. Then there's all those sayings about the market. Buy on the rumors, sell on the news. You'll hear all these people say, if you're not on Wall Street, you're not going to understand what's going on to be able to figure it out. That can be true in some respects. But what can we do anywhere we are in the world where we have a computer and we have a tracking platform like TC2000, the paid version of freestockcharts.com, we can follow price movement and we can follow it as accurately as anyone on Wall Street. That's what we practice to do every single day. It's not like the old days where you had to have a Wall Street ticker and even then you were minutes or hours from knowing what was really going on. We can watch price movement second to second, minute to minute. So again, that's what we want to do. We see stocks are down a little bit for the day. Bonds are up and gold is down. Let's jump into these charts. Going into the second week after the weekly vertical crossover back on Friday, the 1st of November, of course, remember, weekly candles encompass weekly movement. We're just the first day on the latest candle. It's a red open box. It means some caution for further up movement. What we can actually see is just a sideways track. We see that the price percent oscillator has lost just a little bit of its energy. Derivative oscillator is still going up. Go to the two-day chart. <coughs> we can see, again, the two-day did top out higher. On Thursday, this latest two-day candle represents Friday and Monday, still right in line with the trend line. It is showing some slowing because it's not reaching a higher high, but the box, candle box itself, the candle itself, did go higher. Derivative oscillators lost a little bit of energy. Price percent oscillator lost a little bit of energy, but both still green. Well, the derivative oscillator is still green. Price percent oscillator still heading up. Look at the four-hour chart, and that's where we see the real sideways slide. We see where things peaked in the market on Thursday, and then we see a sideways slide since then. Down in the morning on Friday, up in the afternoon, down in the morning on Monday, up a little bit in the afternoon, not recovering from that down move. And we see that in the morning on Monday, we had a crossover going down on the four-hour chart, gaining some momentum, price percent oscillator heading down. But what do you pay attention to? Once you make particularly if you've used the four-hour chart to jump in, of course, what do you pay attention to? You go back to your bigger charts, your two-day and the weekly. So continue to keep your eyes on those things. If you are in an up move, I know plenty of you jumped in earlier when we had that weekly vertical crossover and actually jumped out last Monday. Others of you stayed in 
waited for that pop up on Thursday morning. So again, when you look at the four hour, that is just a very small chart. You go to that two day and you can see that that price percent oscillator still nice and strong. And of course, that weekly chart still nice and strong, but we'll keep an eye on things with those candles getting a little weak on us. But again, we'll just keep our powder dry. Pay attention. Now let's go from the S&P 500 to the NASDAQ 100. We see price well above the weekly and the two-day again. Same kind of sideways slide down 0.13%. Still a green candle starting the week off. See the price percent oscillator losing a little bit of momentum. Derivative oscillator heading up. Go to the two-day chart. And we see on that two-day chart again, sort of that sideways slide. We reach the higher high back on the two-day candle representing Wednesday and Thursday of last week. Derivative oscillators lost a little bit of energy. Price percent oscillator still heading up. Go to that four-hour chart. We see again sort of that same sideways slide crossover going down on the four-hour chart in the morning. So we'll keep our eye on the prize. Again, I know some of you and again, remember, we jumped in on that weekly vertical crossover back on Friday, a week prior to the S&P crossing over. The NASDAQ crossed over going up back on Friday, the 25th of October. Nice up on Monday, sideways the rest of that week. And then, of course, popped up on Monday, the 1st of November and uh, popped up really started sliding sideways after the uh, after it popped up on Monday morning and then popped up again on Thursday afternoon. So we'll see, maybe just digesting gains, getting ready to head back up again. We don't know. We'll let the charts lead us. But weekly and four hour still, uh, weekly and two day still decent, even with that four hour rotation over. Now, what do we see on bonds? Up a little bit for the day. Bond market was closed, but the ETF still shows a little bit of up movement, 0.07%. We see that the price percent oscillator might have gained a little bit, pretty much flat. I'm sorry, derivative oscillator pretty much flat. Price percent oscillator still heading down, starting off with a down weekly candle, not, well, let's see, the low there was 135.10. The low the prior week, 134.45. So did reach a lower low. We'll continue to watch, see what there is to see once the bond market gets cranked up on Tuesday. We see on the two-day chart, again, just nice stair steps going down. Derivative oscillator gained a little downward momentum. Price percent oscillator still heading down. Price well below on that two-day chart, the two-day and the weekly. We go to that four-hour chart. Again, we can see stair steps on the last day and a half. We do see the price percent oscillator flattening a little bit. Derivative oscillator continuing to lose downward momentum. So we'll watch, see how bonds start off the week and how well things go. We'll just have to wait till things start cranking on Tuesday for bonds and let the charts lead us, friends. Okay, lastly, we go to gold. Gold down for the day, 0.24%. Start the week off with a nice down weekly candle pushing through the two-day trend line. And in fact, now that this new trend has been drawn, guess what we can do? Oh, no, we can't. It's just the first day of this latest two-day can. No, forgive me. I'm already starting to look at two-day candles when I'm on the weekly. I can draw the weekly chart now. Well... No, I'm not going to do it. We're not going to wait. We're going to wait until that chart is finished drawing for the week before we try to redraw. We'll just say weekly is below the weekly trend line on that weekly candle. Price percent oscillator heading down. Derivative oscillator gaining downward momentum. Go to the two-day chart. We can see, again, two-day candle strong. That's what I was looking to redraw, friends. And we're going to redraw that right now. Price well below both the weekly and the two-day on the two-day chart. Weekly and two-day trend lines. Price percent oscillator pulling away from the red signal line. Derivative oscillator gaining downward momentum. So again, things are looking quite nice on gold. Gold was our biggest down for the day, 0.24%. 
And again, things appear to be accelerating going down there on gold. Let's look at that four hour chart for a little bit closer view. Yes, plumbing deeper, deeper drops, uh, particularly in the morning. And again, price continuing to move down on that price percent oscillator, derivative oscillator losing a little bit of momentum. It really peaked out on momentum back on the 8th. So we'll continue to keep our eye on that, not putting a lot of stock in that because it is the derivative oscillator on our shortest chart. But again, gold continues to trundle down. How many of you jumped into gold on that four hour chart when we had that rotation over back last Tuesday, the 5th? We had a jumping in point somewhere around the 141 something mark. And of course, reaching the lowest low in the morning on Monday of 136.44. Isn't it beautiful when things work so nice? So again, we'll continue to keep our eye on things. See as this week gets into full swing, just where these charts lead us. If you don't have our book, Charting Your Way to Wealth, what are you waiting for? It is available. Follow the link in your show notes. Purchase it. We'll send you an autographed copy. Got several orders to fulfill back when I'm in the office tomorrow. Thank you so much for ordering those over Veterans Day weekend. Also, if you happen to live overseas and you want to know what it is we do here, want to support us and purchase our book, email us, cw at chartingwealth.com. We will get it right out to you. Patreon members, remember, this Wednesday, this Wednesday, 1230s, Eastern Standard Time. We will be having our monthly question and answer session. Go ahead and send your questions in. In-depth training for our special Patreon members. So appreciate all of your support and help underwriting the costs for putting this channel out. Thank you so much, friends. If you're not a Patreon member, lots of great benefits. Short chart training, long chart training, Bitcoin chart with the training, all sorts of great stuff, plus all the special trainings we do for our Patreon members, those monthly question and answer sessions, depending on your level, even get a free book, even get a year's supply of our traders' journals. So again, friends, thank you so much for your help and support. We love to hear from you. CW at chartingwealth.com. We are here for you. God bless. All the best from the whole team at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.